Welcome back fellow YouTube DIY auto repair folks, enthusiasts, geeks. I'm doing this follow-up video on my wife's 2013 Kia Sorento. It's the SX model with the V6 engine and the all-wheel drive. When I did the video last week of the tensioner and idler pulley noise, I decided to go ahead and check the brake pads and of course, you know, most of the braking is done up front with all the weight. I discovered that uh, I'm pretty skinny at this point as far as pads are concerned. Now, um, I don't compromise on brakes and things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and change out these front pads. The, the back pads were actually pretty good. These front pads are a bit uh, disconcerting. I'm, they're actually getting pr probably pretty close to the indicator to let you know that uh, the brake pads have worn thin, you know, there's a there's an indicator. So um, the other reason is in a couple weeks my daughter's going to be going to college, and we'll be driving up to the mountains of North Carolina, and I'd much prefer having brakes on this car when I'm up in the mountains. So uh, let's see, uh, safety first. Uh, I've jacked the car up, put on jack stands. You can see one of the jack stands at the back there. Um, don't ever compromise with that. You don't want to lift your car with a jack and get under your car with just a jack. They can fail. And I said in my previous videos, I have seen that happen, and it's not very pleasant. So always uh, safety first. I have gone ahead and removed the tires. The tire removal, let's see, I used, uh, in this case, it was a 21 millimeter socket. Now, I also went ahead and I bought this little Astro 1822 one half inch Natto impact wrench. I saw this on Eric O's site, the South Main Auto Channel. Now, this thing is small. It's about four to 450 foot pounds of torque. And this is not much longer than a credit card. So, for the DIYer, this is pretty good. I can tell you if you've got a crankshaft bolt to take off, especially on something like those Hondas, it ain't going to work. You're going to need a big wrench and or, in my case, when I did my Honda, um, it took a cheater bar and a lot of weight. But this is a pretty sweet little wrench. Now I did look at the uh, new model coming out to 1823 because it was up to 650 foot-pounds, but the problem there is you had to read the specifications. It takes like nine and a half cubic feet per minute to run it at full power. Well, I've got your standard 20, 25 gallon compressor and that's not going to work for me. This one runs at the uh, standard of five, maybe five and a half. That I can handle. I've got my standard Ingersoll Rand, which is a half inch, maybe six, 650 foot-pounds. It works pretty well, but where I had problems well, that is because it's full-sized. When I was trying to do some of the front-end work on the Hondas and stuff, you had to make sure that you jacked that car up extremely high because if you were trying to remove the ball joints, you've got that C-clamp and, you know, all kinds of components in there to put on there, and then that, de you know, decreases the amount of space that you have, and sometimes I was actually bumping the ground. So, for the most part, this little uh, half-inch Nano ought to be able to do the trick the next time I do one of those ball joints on either my Toyotas or my Hondas or, or my actually my Ford truck uh, or for the most part this Kia so what I've done so far is like I say took the tire off it was 21 millimeter uh, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna move my light and show you how much uh, brake pad is actually left now forgive me here again this is a one-man show and I have to hold the light and the camera at the same time now if you look you can see not a lot of pad left there. We'll get a better look once I get the pads off. So you can see there's not not much meat and potatoes. Alrighty then. So uh, also one of the first things I did is I went ahead and uncapped the brake fluid reservoir because you're going to be pushing these pistons back eventually to get the new pads in and that will of course make the fluid level rise. I put some uh, rags around it in case it uh, does spill over because, you know, brake fluid will eat up your paint job. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the calipers off. I do have a uh, bungee cord because when you take this off, you don't want to tear the brake hose here. 
Now, also that Braco, if you follow it up, it does have like a 10 millimeter bolt mounted to the firewall. So I'm going to remove that. Then there are two bolts for the calipers. They're the ones that have the little boot. There's 14 millimeter here and a 14 millimeter on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. already loosened these. You want to inspect your boots, make sure there's no leaks. And just kind of lift them off, which in this case is pretty easy. Your brake bleeder screw is right here. So now, let's uh, hook this to the spring. Again, you don't want to twist it and tear it, otherwise you're going to be replacing the brake line. But I'm just going to get it up out of the way. I'm also going to be taking the rotors off and uh, have them checked. If they can be resurfaced, that's great. If not, then I'll have to buy a new set. So here are your pads. This is your shim. And you've got to pull them out of the guides. There's tangs here and here. All right. Let's take a look at this outer one. Okay. Yeah, not bad. But again, toward the end of their life. I'm not going to measure it. I don't have a micrometer. But uh, again, going to the mountains, I want to make sure. So that's the outer one. Going to get a screwdriver, it's going to require a little persuasion. Okay, sorry about that little delay there. You don't want to scar up your rotor there, but you do want to get the pad off. So there's that inner, and then had a shim. Okay. Now, if you're not sure how things go back together, well, do one side at a time. Take pictures. Now, this is the indicator I was talking about. When it wears down to a certain point, it's going to start hitting the rotor. As you can see, I'm just about there. So, good call on my part. Of course, my wife's fussing because she's having to use my car. Like I said in that other video, she's having to use my 2013 Toyota Highlander. Can't you feel the collective sadness in the air? Ah, oh, collective sigh. But, moving on, as my daughter says, suck it up, Mom. Alright, so you can see, pretty well worn. I'm not sure if these are semi-metallics or ceramics. I'm hoping they're ceramics. And I believe they're Kia Originals. Okay, there's another shim. All right, let me go find the uh, necessary wrench. I've got to take off the caliper holder to get to the rotor. All right, well, I'm going to try the little Nano in this case. They are uh, 17 millimeter nuts, and uh, this one is at a bit of an angle. So I'm going to use a little bit of a universal. Let's see how this does. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit long there. Yep. See, 
if I can get by that. No, nope, not in this case. I need one with a slightly smaller swivel to it. B helping me out here. Yeah, that's kind of iffy. Well, what I'll do is I'll get a regular wrench on that. Let's go ahead and get the one on the bottom. Butter. Uh, maybe with an extension. Let me try an extension. So they made it ever so close, and I just don't have the right socket for it. I knew size-wise, but not articulated. So we're going to use a little persuasion here. A five-pound engineer's hammer. And there we go. Take this bracket off. Putting this back on, since I'll be using a torque wrench, I'm not worried about having, about having to use an uh, impact socket. I'm just going to be torquing it down. You can see a bit of rust under here. We're not in the, uh, we're in North Carolina, so we're not in the uh, salt belt. But I'll clean that up with the wire wheel. Or if you got a brush, but my wire wheel is very nice. I'm also going to uh, I have to replace these guides. The uh, guides came with the brakes. I got uh, Wagner Thermoquiets. Got those from Rock Auto. I think uh, maybe 28 bucks plus the shipping. QC 1432 are for the front. Like I said, these guides I'll be replacing. I'm going to be. That looks a little sticky, so I'm going to clean those out and put some new grease. Make sure you do one at a time, because in many models, one is fluted, so you want to make sure you get that right. And then again, check your boots, make sure everything's okay. Let me put this down. All right, the next big question is, you know, how do I get these uh, rotors off? Some, like uh, a lot of Toyotas, are free-floating, whereas the Hondas, uh, and this is similar to the Honda, it has two screws that are... Um, Phillips head screws. Let's see if I can zero in on that. Okay. Focus. Yeah, there you go. There's one of them. So what I did is I spritzed some PB blaster on them earlier. And I've let it sit. Now I'm also going to use my uh, impact wrench to hammer that and see if I can get it off without stripping. We'll see if this works or if it's going to make a monkey out of me. But you hit and twist at the same time. That was easy. Let's try this one. Much easier than I anticipated. All right, let me get the screwdriver here.
Sorry, I had a little searching there. Here it is. We're going to take these off. Now, if you don't have one of those impact wrenches, what you can do is take a um, ball peen hammer and tap on it. It is kind of recessed. A ball peen hammer or um, let me see, what else could you use? Uh, give me a second, let me think about that. I'll tell you what else you can use. So I got those out. I'm going to go ahead and work these off. And they're on. Alright, so that was fairly easy. Now i got to do the other side. I'm going to take these into town, like I say, to get them uh, resurfaced or turned. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I swallowed a bug. And see if there's enough, they'll measure them for me to see if there's enough life left in them to, uh, to actually use them again. If not, I'll be buying a new set. So, uh, like I say, if you uh, need to get those out, uh, a punch, that's what I'm thinking of. You can use a punch and tap on it and try and unscrew it and then tap on it and try and unscrew it. You don't want to strip it, otherwise you're going to be trying to drill that out. And I hate doing that. All right, so uh, again, I'm going to examine my brake lines. I'm going to, you know, clean this up. They say don't blow it out with air because, you know, all the particles and stuff. So I use a lot of brake clean. And I'm going to clean all this up. But that's half the job right there. I'll also check the uh, health of my CV boots. <coughs> Give me, gosh. I'll make sure they're not torn. Uh, you know, telltale sign if you see grease flung up in there, mm, you're going to have to replace that. Uh, that's a bad omen. Okay, so let me get to the and work on the other side. Like I said, I'm not going to show you both sides. Let me just do the one side. And I'm going to mark this so I'll know which was driver's side and which was the passenger side. Alrighty then. Uh, I had to go into town and uh, I was going to get the rotors resurfaced, turned. But when they looked it up at O'Reilly's, they said it is non-serviceable. Now, they were fairly smooth, but there was a bit of a groove in one of them. They were still quite a bit of surface area. But since they can't uh, resurface those, I decided just to go ahead and buy some new ones because of that one particular groove. Um, I went ahead and got some uh, CarQuest wherevers. They were like $69 a piece. By the time I added that together, $140, put in the 20% off code. With tax title and license, I got those two front ones for about uh, $120. So, I've brought them in, uh, opened them up, I went ahead and washed them down with the brake clean. Um, many of these have, I guess they used to have Cosmoline on them, but uh, in order to pre prevent rust, they do have some kind of an oily coating on them of some kind. So, I, I washed them down with brake clean, let them dry. And so now, um, what I'm doing is I'm going to push the piston back into the caliper. And you remember, don't forget to take the cap off of the fluid reservoir for your brake fluid. And so what I've done is I've taken a C-clamp and put it here and an old brake pad and put it on the actual cup of the piston. And you don't want to sit there and put the C-clamp down into, say, this screw part down into there and push it down because you run the risk of actually cracking it. I've seen it happen. And when you do this, just do it very slowly because you're working against hydraulic pressure. And what you do is you, when you push this back, this gives you more room because you remember you're going to have more material on your brake pads. Just very slowly. And then watch your fluid level. Make sure you don't run over. flashlight. It might be a little difficult to see. I had a rain shower that uh, came through, followed me from uh, town, and so I had to let it pass. Let's take a look here. Maybe a little bit more. This puts nice even pressure on things. Slowly. See where I'm 
that now. Well, that works. Alright, food level's up pretty far. That should be enough. And we'll go ahead and put the new rotor on. So let me get those. Nothing fancy there. I slid those on and put the two Phillips head screws back in. Uh, now I've got to go uh, find my mounting caliper bracket, put that on, and I'll torque those bolts down. I've got to go look at the torque specs. So before I put the calipers in, I cleaned them up. See the it uh, rather smooth at this point. And when I put in the new brackets, uh, disc brake quiet, that's that kind of orangish red stuff. I put those where the ends of the pads will be sliding back and forth. And then I'll put some on the tabs of the actual pads. So I'm going to go ahead and remount this. So the caliper mounting bracket is back on. Again, the only issue I have, that upper bolt there's the uh, one of two bolts in the strut that interferes and basically what you could do is you know back it out do what you need to do and put it back in I don't think it would alter your adjustments too much as far as you know camber and caster and so uh, I decided not to do that I went ahead and torqued the bottom bolt down to 70 got a feel for how tight that is took my 17 millimeter wrench up top and just tightened the heck out of it so now I'm going to put the pads in. Um, I'm going to grab the pads and I'll show you how much pad material is on the new pad versus the old pad. So if you side by side comparison, yeah, I think it was about time. If you look at edge to edge, those things were worn remember this is going to be the inboard because it has the wear indicator so I'm going to put a little more glide on here disc quiet on here slide it in and uh, oh before I do that I'm going to spritz down the uh, rotor one more time with a little brake clean just to make sure it's absolutely clean with no oily residue I have also put a little bit of the disc quiet on the back of the new pad where the piston is going to meet. Now, I called Wagner and the uh, initial brake pads had shims. And this design, they say you do not need shims. You can see there's a little bit of a lip right in here. And he says that compensates for the shim. So that raised area, piston will rotate in here. Alrighty, brake pad is installed. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when I was lubricating that other pad, that was actually for the other side. The indicator, that wear indicator, goes in the inside and down on the bottom. So I happen to have the pad for the other side. Alright, let me go ahead and put the uh, caliper on, and uh, then we'll uh, tighten it up to specs. So give me a second, let me grab the screws. I'll put a little fluid film on them. That's just a helps resist corrosion. Let's see if we got, got the piston back far enough. I think it's going to take a little more 
squishing that piston. So let me, yeah, let me put my C clamp back on there. I've checked the level of brake fluid and it's pretty near the top. So when I do that other side, I'm going to have to make sure I suction some of that brake fluid out. Now I have it pushed all the way in. Let's try it again. hand to torque it down or use a power impact tool if you're going to use that until your hand threaded Alright, now, because I'm going to be tightening this up on the outside, I'm going to have to get another wrench, which I believe is probably a 14 here, to hold this so it doesn't spin. So give me a second to find another wrench. I was incorrect. It's going to be a 17 to hold that nut to the inside, 14 on the outside. Um, 24 foot-pounds is the torque on that, so I've got to get my torque wrench. Alright, so that's torque bound. Here and here, don't forget your bolt here, that 10 millimeter. I'm not really torquing it, I'm just making it tight to hold your brake line. So let me do that real quick. Well, it helps if you uh, put the correct socket on there. That's not it. This is a uh, that's an 11. I believe that's a 12. Let me find that one. Yeah. Here we go. Getting old. There we go. Alright, that's on. Alright, so let's double check. Make sure you take your bungee out. Everything's tightened up. I looked at everything, the steering rack, CV joints, everything's good. Tightened up, tightened, tightened. Pads are on, glide material, the disc quiet, sill glide. That's on, pads on. Brake line looks good. Uh, maybe one more spritz of the uh, outside here with some brake clean and then I can start putting the tire on and then I'll work on the other side. Alrighty, so uh, this left side is buttoned up. I put the tire back on. Monsters are heavy. And uh, what I'll do is I'll torque the lug nuts once I get it on the ground. Uh, I just tighten them up just so they're firm. Now, once I get back on the ground I'll tighten those things up to specs. Um, cannot remember the torque setting at the moment. I'll look in my book. But I'll go ahead and work on the other side and try not to forget to empty out the reservoir a little bit because it's right at the top because I'm going to be pressing that other uh, piston on the other side. So I believe I have everything done up to a point. Uh, I didn't realize that while I was working on the other side I'd forgot to turn the camera off. So there's going to be an awful lot of uh, editing to remove that large gap. I guess there's about 10 minutes. But uh, again, tires back on. Let's go up here. Here's my fluid reservoir. As you can see, it's still pretty high. I'm going to take some more out. I double checked, triple checked. All my bolts are torqued to spec. Looking pretty good. Again, the, one of the last things I have to do is when I get this on the ground, 
which I'm going to give up for the day. Uh, when I put it on the ground tomorrow, I will torque these particular bolts, these lug nuts. And then uh, when you uh, get ready to do this, don't forget that you don't want to just put it in drive and take off. You're going to have to pump the brakes a little bit. Again, here's the reservoir. You're going to have to pump the brakes a little bit to make sure that you've gotten the pads to seat properly. All right, so here's the car. Now, again, I was talking to Wagner, and uh, the, the guys you're talking to aren't just guys behind the desk. They are mechanics. And so the gentleman recommended that I take it down the street, go no more than 30 miles an hour, and do some gradual stops at under 30 miles an hour. Do 15 to 20, I believe he said. Um, some people don't believe in that, but he says, you know, I've been a mechanic for a long time, and this is what I recommend. So when I get this thing on the ground tomorrow, I'm going to take it down the street, no faster than 30, and I will do some gentle braking to get these pads to seat. So for now, uh, you know, the rain came through to cool it down, but the humidity is still about a thousand percent. So uh, I will wrap up shop for tonight and come back tomorrow and let you know how things work out. Oh, um, I took the brake fluid out and I want to show you the color. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm going to have to check on that. But if I need the brakes bled, I'm going to have the mechanic do that because it's so much easier when you have it up on a rack and you have an electric bleeder, which is a vacuum. It's just so much easier, so much faster. Sometimes you just have to pay for the services rather than try and do it yourself. So, uh, again, it's a little on the... I don't know if that's uh, what it should be, but I'll check into it. Okay then, let's uh, finish this video up. Let's do a small recap. I changed all four pads on the front of my wife's Kia here. I did have to put two new rotors on because the uh, originals are non-serviceable. Found that out when I got to O'Reilly's. Now there were still plenty of material left on them, but there was a groove on the passenger side rotor on the outside I believe that I just wasn't happy with so I don't compromise on the brakes and the tires I went ahead and replaced them I got some Carquest wherevers I think those were about 140 but because I used the advanced auto discount code that knocked 20 percent off and the brake pads I got from Rock Auto their Wagner Thermoquiets that was like $32, I think, plus a little bit of shipping. Um, minimum of tools. The only real issue I had was that one bolt in the strut sticks out and makes it hard to loosen or tighten the one caliper mounting bracket bolt. You could remove it. I don't think you'd alter the, the caster or the camber any, but I liked it not to. I went ahead and torqued that lower caliper mounting bolt down with the torque wrench, got a feel for it, and did the up one. It, it's not going to go anywhere. My wife uh, took it out for a test drive after I did the test drive. Remember, Wagner says, uh, take this out. Don't go above 30 miles an hour. Do a slow, gradual stop 10 to 15 times. Luckily, I've got a fairly long street, and then I cross a road, and then I'm on a loop, and it's fairly level. So I did that 15 times. Didn't go above 30. Gradual stop. That makes sure everything seats properly. Turned it over to my wife. She and my daughter took it out. She only clipped three mailboxes, a couple of cats, and a few assorted squirrels. So I consider that a successful test drive. I'll end this for now. I hope this helps save you some money. Um, again, the only expense I was not expecting was to have to buy the rotors. But again, it's well worth going ahead and buying the new ones to make sure you're safe because you know most of this braking occurs up front. And because this is all-wheel drive, there's a little extra weight up front because of an extra differential. Just remember my credo, I'll fix your car, but it won't go far.